Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Shep and Reed. As you can clearly tell, I am in a new location, and by new location, I mean my bed, because for those who don't know, I'm actually moving soon, so I'm actually in the middle of packing everything right now, and so the bookshelves, which is where I usually film my videos from, they're kind of empty in the sense that there's no books right now, but they're filled with other random things on there, and so I thought it'd be really weird to film in that location so i'm gonna be filming the next few videos on my bed here and hopefully it works i actually don't really like this location but like whatever i'm just gonna deal with it so anyways as you can tell from the title of my video this is going to be the wrap up or books that i read for the month of july so anyways let's just get right into it So first and foremost, let's start off with some stats. So July was a really good freaking month. I read 34 books, which honestly is a shocker for me. Um, I think this is actually my best month in terms of the books read in a month. But I still think that February was a better month in the sense that there were less days in February. And I believe I read 33 books. So I read more books than there were days compared to July. So that's kind of how I see it. But in terms of number of books, July was definitely my best month so far. So anyways, out of the 34 books, I read 7 ebooks, 14 audiobooks, and 13 physical books. And honestly, 7 ebooks, a lot of them were graphic novels, I want to say. I did a lot of graphic novels this month. I think maybe like 3 or 4. I didn't get the stats for that. And then on top of the 34 books that I read, I also DNF 4 books. So not too bad, honestly. And then in terms of the ratings, so out of the 34 books, I gave 1. This is my lowest rating by far. I gave 1 half a star. It wasn't even 1 star. It wasn't even worth 1 star. And then I gave 1 1.5 one stars. I gave 2 2 stars. 2 2.5 two stars. 5 3 stars. 1 3.5 stars. 16 four stars, one four and a half stars, and five five star books. So I had a lot of four star reads as you can clearly tell from these numbers and some not that many bad books I want to say but there was one in particular that was so bad oh my god I don't even want to talk about it like I already talked about it once or twice already and I'm not talking about it in this video just letting you guys know because it was that bad like I don't even want to ruin this video by talking about it so so in this video, I'm really just going to share four books with you guys out of 34 books. I know, sorry, but I just don't really have the time to go through 34 books and I don't have the mental capacity to do that right now. And I have four other books that I want to talk about them really briefly. And by briefly, I mean I'm just going to talk about what I gave them in terms of my ratings because I actually went into detail for my reading vlog. So my reading vlogs are usually non-spoilers. I don't really go into details about the spoilers aspects to it, but I do talk about in detail my feelings and my reactions to certain things in the books. So there are four books that I want to mention very briefly because I did mention them in detail in my reading vlog. So I feel like you should just check my reading vlog out to get more information on how I felt for those books. So the next three books that I want to mention are books that I talked a lot more in detail in my reading vlog for The Reading Rush. So I will link that above in case you want to check that out. As of right now, I'm in the middle of editing it. But by the time this video comes out, it will definitely be out by then. So I will link that above for you guys to check it out. All the books that I read during that readathon, which by the way, spoiler alert, I read 10 books. So... That's also why I don't want to go too much into detail with this video now. So the first book that I want to mention very quickly is Red Sister by Mark Lawrence. This one I gave three stars. It was just an okay read. I feel like the beginning was a little bit slow. It definitely picked up toward the end and I'm inclined to pick up the rest of the series but I don't think I want to purchase the series if that makes any sense. So if you want to find out more information about this book in particular, I will link above my Reading Rush video for you guys to check it out. Then the next video that I want to mention very quickly is A Quarter of Thorn and Roses by Sarah J Maas. This one I gave 5 stars. It was so freaking good. It's like a very loose retelling of Beauty and the Beast but with fairies and so much more obstacles and grittiness and bloody stuff that happens in this book and it was really good. I really liked it guys. I mean honestly I'm not surprised because I am a Sarah J Mass trash person here so I feel like that was no surprise to anyone. So again, for more information on how I felt about this book, I'll link above my reading vlog, reading vlog for you guys to check it out. Did I mention that I gave this book 5 stars? I gave this book 5 stars, guys. 5 stars, all the way. Then the next book that I want to mention very quickly is The Art of Breaking Things by Laura Simpson. This one I gave 4 stars. It was a very cute, adorable read. There is some trigger warnings in this book. For example, sexual assault, pedophilia, drug abuse alcoholism etc so definitely be aware of that but i really enjoyed that that was a very good book especially because of the debut book as well and again for more information on this book and how i felt about it i will link above my reading blush reading vlog above for you guys to check it out then the next book that i want to talk very quickly is four dead queens by astrid schultz this one i gave three and a half stars i talked about it a little bit more in my 24 and 48 our reading vlog which i will link above in case you want to check that out honestly i feel like this was one of my most disappointing reads because this was a very 
highly anticipated novel of mine for 2019 and I feel like there were definitely some aspects of it that really took me away from the book for example the timing and some of the pacing of this book but again for more information I will link above my reading blog for you guys to check it out okay so finally down to my four books that I actually want to talk about in this video the first book that I want to talk about is a lovely book and that is Wicked Fox by Kat Cho so this book is a Korean inspired based on Korean mythology on a creature called Gumihos and Gumihos are these nine-tailed fox they're usually women and they have to devour the spirits of men or the souls of men to survive and this book follows a young Gumiho called Mi Young who is basically struggling with the sense that she needs to devour the souls of these men to survive so for her to do that she decides to go after only evil men to survive instead of going after just men in general and then one day due to some circumstances she finds herself saving this young guy called Jihoon he was actually being attacked by a goblin and in the process of saving him she ends up losing her gumiho bead which is where her fox spirit resides and while she's trying to figure out what the heck you're supposed to do now that her gumiho bead is no longer residing inside her and it's typical of a k-drama world because this book is also very heavily inspired by k-dramas she ends up in the same school as Jihoon and Jihoon does know that she's a gumiho because he does remember her nine-tailed fox when she saved him and he has also heard all these stories about gumiho and how they devour the souls of men but despite all of that he ends up befriending her and as typical of all YA books a tentative friendship slash romance forms and in the meantime Mion is still trying to figure out what to do with her fox speed so that's kind of the gist of this book and there's a lot of k-drama tropes in here because like I said already this book is very heavily on k-drama and it was just such a cute book guys I give this book four stars. My favorite aspect will probably be the friendship and the romance between Mi Young and Jihoon. It was just so endearing and Jihoon was probably the softest character I've ever read. His love and his devotion to his grandmother or known as his Haemoni was just so adorable and it was just everything guys like we had to protect him at all costs guys. He was just so cute. I also really liked Mi Young's transition in the beginning to the end because in the beginning she was seen as kind of cold, kind of calculating, kind of standoffish also because of the way how she was raised but Jihoon was able to kind of see past that and somehow break her outer shell essentially and her transition from the beginning to end I thought was really really well done. But the most unique thing about this book was the fact that it read exactly like a K-drama. I mean I was able to basically picture every single scene unfolding in my head just because of all the k-drama tropes that I have seen in the past and so I was able to utilize all of those tropes that I have seen and watched and put it into this book because that's exactly kind of how it felt and it was just very unique because usually when I'm reading books I'm not very good at picturing like I picture it very loosely in my mind but in this book it was so vivid but at the same time though the one thing that kind of put me off on this book for a little bit and why I gave it four stars is because this book is very similar to this one k-drama called My Girlfriend is a gumiho it was a k-drama that came out 10 years ago and yes guys i probably just dated myself because i watched that k-drama back in college high school something like that and it was one of the best k-dramas that came out during that time period and this book was very very similar to that they had a lot of similarities to it i would say that the two main characters mi young and jihon were exactly like the two main characters in the k-drama my girlfriend is a gumiho there were also secondary characters in this book that were also very similar to the secondary characters in the k-drama as well there were a few differences here and there but i would say there's a lot of similarities between this book and that k-drama so that's also probably one of the reasons why i was also able to picture everything so vividly because it was like watching or re-watching or re-reading the k-drama back then. That being said though, there were definitely some distinct differences in this book versus the K-drama. For example, Mi Young's relationship with her mother was very well done in this book. I actually really liked that. That was at all not relevant in the K-drama at all, so that was a huge difference. Another major difference was how Mi Young was trying to resist the temptation of having to devour the souls of men in exchange for her immortality so that was also a really really well done aspect in this book as well and overall like despite some of the similarities i still really really enjoy this book i thought it was really really cute i love jihoon so much and the ending i actually thought it was a really good ending until i got to the epilogue and the epilogue was such a huge cliffhanger i was not expecting it to be 
a cliffhanger but in a way I wasn't surprised because I did go to her launch event and she did say that there was going to be a book two so I guess it makes sense as to why there's a cliffhanger so there is a transition to book two but guys this book was super cute definitely four stars all the way then the next book that I want to mention is I Wish You All the Best by Mason Deaver this was the best book it was so freaking cute guys so this book follows ben who just came out to their parents as non-binary and they were kicked out and now they're forced to live with their strange sister whom they haven't seen for the past 10 or so years now as well as the fact that they need to enroll in a new school and because of what happened with their parents ben is now having these anxiety and panic attacks and so they decide to only come out to their sister their sister's husband as well as their therapist and decides to keep a low profile at their new school unfortunately their plan to go under the radar and remain unnoticed kind of goes astray when Nathan ends up befriending them. And this super close friendship forms that might turn into something more and it was such a cute book guys. Oh my god. I give this book four and a half stars. There's just so much love, so much hope, so much friendship in this book that it was just so beautiful to listen to. I also listened to this book on audiobook which I highly recommend. They never did such a good job with all the voices. But anyways, this is the first time that I've actually read a book with a non-binary main character and I loved it. And I'm actually really freaking glad that we're getting a lot of these books with more diversity and more representation. I truly believe that this book is taking us in that right step. The best part of this book was definitely the relationships. Ben's friendship and relationship with Nathan was so good and I also loved Bren's relationship with their sister and Nathan was just one of the best characters I have ever read. He is so endearing, a little annoying to be honest, but a whole lot of heart and I just loved reading about him. I have no other words to say. Ben's sister was another character that I actually really like reading about. It's a very unique dynamic because there was some sort of abandonment issue because Ben's sister, she ended up abandoning her entire family when she just left high school when she just graduated high school without a note nothing she ended up just leaving everyone in the family and so ben always felt that she left them and that sense of abandonment and that journey to kind of rekindle their relationship was just so well done i actually really that was probably my favorite relationship aspect in this book to be honest so this book was just everything guys if you're looking for a really cute book if you're looking for a really cute romance great relationships great diversity all that stuff that i definitely recommend this book then the next book that i want to mention is the devouring gray by christine lynn herman this was such a good book as well so this book is about a girl called violet who just moved into town but she soon realizes that her family is actually one of the four founding families that protects this small town from a monster from another dimension isaac harper and justin are from the other three founding families and while there might be history either good or bad the three of them along with violet realize that they might must join hands to find out the truth of their own family's past as well as the monster's past. This book, when it came out, had all the hype. I was actually kind of overwhelmed by all the hype that I received. So I came in it with kind of some trepidation to be honest because I was like, is it worth the hype? Is it not worth the hype? And I ended up giving this book four stars. It was actually a really freaking good book. So this book was actually pitched as Raven Cycle meets Stranger Things. And while I usually find the pitching to be kind of incorrect in some sense, but this one was actually freaking accurate. Like I was shocked by how exactly I felt that this book was so similar to those two things. I mean the friendship in this book was so similar to the Raven Cycle and the atmospheric writing, the location, the setting was so similar to Stranger Things. I absolutely love the friendships in this book, I love the LGBT representation, and I love the atmospheric writing and setting. So my favorite character might actually be Isaac uh, because of his broodiness. I realized I have a really big thing for broody guys, I don't know why, and he reminded me kind of of Ronan in the Raven Raven Cycle, which was also one of my favorite characters, so that's probably why I like Isaac the most, but I have a thing for broody guys, and Isaac was literally the perfect broody guy ever. And I also really, really like Harper. She was such a freaking badass despite her disability. And my least favorite character would probably be Justin. I honestly could not care less about his character. I think he was actually the weakest link in the chain. And I think that overall speaking, I think that the characters are probably the strongest aspect in this book. Other than Justin, I found all of them to be very fleshed out and complex. Another aspect that I really liked was a magical element aspect to it. I thought it was 
very very well done and the whole secret history about what happened all those years ago with the founding family was just so intriguing and I love reading every aspect of it and I'm also so excited for that sequel guys that ending was mmm I need to know what happens next guys there is one character in particular at the very end that I am so intrigued and fascinated by what will happen next because this character arc can be done so well and I don't know like I just feel like I need to know what happens to this one particular character once this one particular character like the ending of this one particular character guys mm, I need to find out what happens next guys like ASAP. So if you have enjoyed Raven Cycle or Stranger Things, just one or the other to be honest because I was not the biggest fan of Raven Cycle and I still really like this book. Um, so you don't have to enjoy both things. If you do, obviously even better. But if you enjoy one of those aspects, if you like atmospheric writing, if you like really good characters, if you like books with some sort of like monsterish element to it, then I definitely recommend this one. The last and final book that I want to talk about in this video is A Winter's Promise by Christelle Davos. This is the first book in the Mirror Visitor Quartet. So in this book, many years ago, there was some sort of catastrophic event where the world has now split into many little pieces. And they're called arcs. And they are these floating islands that are ruled by some immortal ancestor. And this book follows a girl called Ophelia who comes from the anima arc where everyone has some sort of ability that has something to do with objects so her ability she has two abilities one is able to walk through mirrors and the other ability is to read objects when she touches them and one day she ends up getting some sort of notice that she is now engaged to this guy from another faraway arc and it's kind of a political arranged marriage in a sense and shortly after she meets him she ends up moving from her arc to his arc and his arc is called the pole which I feel like is derived from North Pole, South Pole, because his arc is cold, it's dark, it's dangerous, and it is cutthroat. And essentially, it is the exact opposite of the arc that she grew up in. And she also finds herself in a very interesting power struggle between her husband, her husband's family, and kind of the politics surrounding the arc of Pole. And this book was so complex and complicated, guys. It's very multi-layered. I ended up giving this book four stars. So I would say that this book started off a little bit confusing for me in the beginning because there are just so many elements to this book that was kind of being interesting introduced and there were just so many layers from finding out some of the magical elements in these arcs just the origin of how this world was created to the fact that there are these immortal ancestors residing in all of these arcs and the fact that these arcs have very different and unique magic system there's just so many elements in this book that is just very complex and when they're all thrown to you in the beginning of the book which kind of it was I would say the first like 100 even 200 pages is all about world building it was freaking confusing guys but once you get past that once I got more into the story it became so much more fascinating and I loved reading about Ophelia she was so quiet and unassuming I feel like everyone always underestimates her because the fact that she's just so unassuming like no one ever even notices her but she's actually really really strong and when I say strong I mean she has some sort of inner strength that no one ever expects from her and I also loved how determined and pragmatic she was in all these situations like she'll find herself in these situations and rather than freaking out rather than you know kind of like freezing up she ends up being very like not calculating but she assesses all of the situation like all the elements to the situation very calculating I guess but like not in a cold calculating sense it's just trying to figure out like okay how to process this and she does it very in a methodical manner my favorite part though would definitely be the setting I just loved how complex this world was it was just so imaginative it was so creative and it had a very very intricate magic system involved but my biggest issue with this book and I feel like I mentioned this a little bit in the beginning was the pacing I do feel like the beginning was a little bit too rushed there's a lot of thrown at you for the world building all that stuff and just when I started to figure out her own animal arc she ends up moving to Thorne's arc which Thorne by the way is her fiance and so it kind of like threw me off a little bit and then the middle became kind of lagging there's some sort of like nothing really going on and then the ending was when the court and political intrigue kind of came into play and it became so much more fascinating and the ending actually ends kind of abruptly so in a way I'm actually really excited for the sequel because I want to know what happens next and it's kind of a cliffhanger but like 
in a very abrupt cliffhanger, I guess, if that makes any sense. But regardless, I have so many questions that are left unanswered in this book, and I definitely cannot wait to pick up the sequel as soon as possible. As of right now, I am supposed to pick it up for Newts, and I haven't picked it up yet. I just started reading my first book for Newts, so not doing great there. But I do hope to pick up the sequel as soon as possible because I need to know what happens next, guys. And I've also heard that the second one is so much better, so if I feel like this first book I gave four stars, I'm really hoping that the second one will be a five-star read. So anyways, those are all the books that I want to talk about in this video. It's kind of a short video in the sense that I don't have 34 books to talk about, but at the same time, I am packing, I am moving, I have so many other things I'm dealing with right now. I don't think I can have the mental capacity to actually talk about all 34 books. And also my reading vlogs go very much into detail with my thoughts on all the books I read during my reading vlogs, so I feel like for more information of the books I read, you should definitely check out my reading vlog instead. So anyways, those are all of the books that I want to mention in this video. Let me know down below if you have read any of the books I mentioned. If you have, what did you think about them? Do you agree with my assessment? Do you not agree with my assessment? Which book have you read for this past month? Let me know all that information down below. But as always, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe down below. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!